Hello, 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 welcome back to my channel. Ayan, lahat po tayo ay excited. Inabangan po namin ng ilang araw po kung sino po ang mananalo na presidente po dito sa US. Kung si Trump ba o, so, o si Joe Biden. Ayan. At ngayon po nalaman na po natin na si Joe Biden po ang nanalo na president. Ayan, uh, magbibigay po siya ngayon ng first message niya as a president-elect. Ayan. So, maray marami pong tao, ayan, sa kung saan siya um, naninirahan sa Delaware. Ayan, sa iba't ibang dako po ng uh, US, lahat po ng mga tao ay nagsasaya po dahil sa kanyang panalo. Dahil... Um, para sa lahat ng mga democratic uh, sa kanila po democracy po demokrasya ayan mas uh, siya po ang ang most popular na maraming buto kaysa kay ex-president Trump ayan so lahat po yan ay nagsasaya so tunghayan po natin ang kanyang mensahe para sa lahat at ang kanyang vice presidente ay isang South Asian, first South Asian na babae. Ayan, pinakaunang babae na vice presidente po dito sa US. Ayan. So, napaka, napaka historical po ng gabing ito, ng panalo po nila ngayon. Kasi si Joe Biden, sabi nga dito sa news, ay siya yung pinaka oldest president na na-elect. Ika-46 uh, president po siya ng United States. At katandin po niya si Kamala Harris. Si Kamala Harris po ang mother niya is coming from India. And then, mga immigrants po yung mga mother at pa yung parents niya actually. Mga immigrants po yan. So, pero naturally born American po siya. So, very, very, very historical po ito. Lalo na sa mga races, sa different kind of races na nandito po sa US. Sa mga immigrant po. So, ayan, um, meron na tayong representante na naging vice presidente po sa United States. Na hindi lang yan basta-basta na, na tungkulin. Ayan, hindi basta-basta tayo makaakyat dyan. So, para sa mga emigrant, mabuhay in the future, meron tayo palang kalalagyan. Ayan, tunghayan natin ang um, paparating na, namang, na minsahi ni Joe Biden, President-elect at saka ni Kamala Harris. Ayan, mga Democrat Party po yan sila. So, ayan, hello guys. Um, malapit na po magbigay po ng pinakaunang speech uh, ang ating president-elect po, si Joe Biden, dito po sa US. At ang kanyang vice presidente na first woman vice president po dito sa US. A very memorable, a very historical po na nangyari po. At si vice presidente po ay isa pong immigrant ang mga parents niya. So, Ayan guys, panoorin niyo po, malapit na malapit na po, kahit lahat po kami dito ay nag-aabang sa kanyang speech at inabangan po ang, ang pagbibilang po ng mga balot during the election. So ayan, so, ayan pakinggan po natin. Ayan, si Kamala Harris po. Yan po yung vice presidente. Both immigrants po yan, yung parents niya. So, ang akala natin, wala nang um, pag-asa dahil immigrants ang parents niya. Pero guys, ngayon, very historical po talaga. Huwag po kayong mawawala ng pag-asa. So, sa pangyayaring ito, nananalo po ang ating sabi nga, colored woman. So, isa, ya, isa siya sa naging simbolo paano po ma-unite. So, ayan, pakinggan natin. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. John Lewis, before his passing. 
It is only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. To guard it and never take it for granted. And protecting our democracy takes struggle. It takes sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But there is joy in it. And there is progress. Because we, the people, have the power to build a better future. That's right. Pag magkaisa ang lahat ng mga tao. And when our very democracy was on the ballot in this election, with the very soul of America at stake, and the world watching, you ushered in a new day for America. Yes. To our campaign staff and volunteers, this extraordinary team, thank you for bringing more people than ever before into the democratic process. And for making this victory possible, to the poll workers and election officials across our country who have worked tirelessly to make sure every vote is counted, our nation owes you a debt of gratitude. You have protected the integrity of our democracy. And to the American people who make up our beautiful country, thank you for turning out in record numbers to make your voices heard. And I know times have been challenging, especially the last several months. The grief, sorrow, and pain the worries and the struggles, but we have also witnessed your courage, your resilience, and the generosity of your spirit. For four years, you marched and organized for equality and justice for our lives and for our planet, and then you voted. And you delivered a clear message. You chose hope and unity, decency, science, and yes, truth. You chose Joe Biden as the next president of the United States. And Joe is a healer, a uniter, a tested and steady hand, a person whose own experience of loss gives him a sense of purpose that will help us as a nation reclaim our own sense of purpose. And a man with a big heart who loves with abandon. It's his love for Jill, who will be an incredible first lady. It's his love for Hunter and Ashley and his grandchildren and the entire Biden family. And while I first knew Joe as vice president, I really got to know him as the father who loved Bo, my dear friend who we remember here today. And to my husband, Doug, children Cole and Ella and my sister Maya and our whole family. I love y'all more than I can ever express. We are so grateful to Joe and Jill for welcoming our family into theirs on this incredible journey. And to the woman most responsible for my presence here today, my mother, Shamala Gopalan Harris, who is always in our hearts. 
when she came here from India at the age of 19, she maybe um, didn't quite imagine this moment. But she believed so deeply in an America where a moment like this is possible. And so I am thinking about her and about the generations of women, black women, Asian, white, Latina, Native American women, who throughout our nation's history have paved the way for this moment tonight. Women who fought and sacrificed so much for equality and liberty yes. and justice for all, including the black women who are often, too often, overlooked, but so often prove they are the backbone of our democracy. Yes. All the women who have worked to secure and protect the right to vote for over a century, 100 years ago with the 19th Amendment, 55 years ago with the Voting Rights Act, and now in 2020 with a new generation of women in our country who cast their ballots and continue the fight for their fundamental right to vote and be heard. Tonight I reflect on their struggle, their determination, and the strength of their vision to see what can be unburdened by what has been. And I stand on their shoulders. And what a testament it is to Joe's character that he had the audacity to break one of the most substantial barriers that exists in our country and select a woman as his vice president. office, I will not be the last. Because every little girl watching tonight sees that this is a country of possibilities. Yes. And to the children of our country, regardless of your gender, mm -hmm. our country has sent you a clear message. Dream with ambition, lead with conviction, and see yourselves in a way that others may not, simply because they've never seen it before. But know that we will applaud you every step of the way. Yes. That's a very good and to the American people, no matter who very they vote for, I will strive to be a vice president like Joe was to President Obama. Loyal, honest, and prepared, waking up every day thinking of you and your family. Because now is when the real work begins. The hard work, the necessary work, the good work, the essential work to save lives and beat this epidemic, to rebuild our economy, so it works for working people to root out systemic racism in our justice system and society, to combat the climate crisis, to unite our country and heal the soul of our nation. Yes. And the road ahead will not be easy, but America is ready. And so are Joe and I. We have elected a president who represents the best in us, a leader the world will respect and our children will look up to, a commander in chief who will respect our troops and keep our country safe, and a president for all Americans. And it is now my great honor to introduce the President-elect of the Yay. United States of America, Joe Biden.
RLA President Joe Biden Pakinggan po natin ang kanyang mensahe Napaka powerful po ng mensahe ng Vice Presidente na si Kamala Harris So ngayon naman po ay tunghayan po natin at pakinggan ang mensahe po ng ating pre-elect Joe Biden Tom, Senator Tom Carper down there, and I think I think Senator Coons is there, and I think the governor's around. And, is that Ruth Ann? And our former governor, Ruth Ann Minner. Most importantly, my sister's in law, my sister Valerie. Anyway. Folks, the people of this nation have spoken. They've delivered us a clear victory. A convincing victory, a victory for we the people. We've won with the most votes ever cast from presidential ticket in the history of the nation. 74 million. My goodness, imagine. Imagine my well, love. Well, that's a bit of surprise me. Tonight, we're seeing all over this nation, all cities and all parts of the country, indeed across the world, an outpouring of joy, of hope, renewed faith, and tomorrow, bring a better day. And I'm humbled by the trust and confidence you've placed in me. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. Who doesn't see red states and blue states, only sees the United States. I work with all my heart, with the confidence of the whole people, to win the confidence of all of you. And for that is what America, I believe, is about. It's about people. And that's what our administration will be all about. I sought this office to restore the soul of America, to rebuild the backbone of this nation, the middle class, and to make America respected around the world again. And to unite us here at home. It's the honor of my lifetime that so many millions of Americans have voted for that vision. And now, the work of making that vision is real. It's a task, the task, of our time. Folks, as I said many times before, I'm Jill's husband. And I would not be here without her love and tireless support of Jill and my son Hunter and Ashley, my daughter, and all our grandchildren and their spouses and all our family. They're my heart. Jill is a mom, a military mom, an educator. And she has dedicated her life to education. But teaching isn't just what she does, it's who she is. For American educators, this is a great day for y'all. You're going to have one of your own in the White House. And Jill's going to make a great first lady. I'm so proud of her. Well, I'll have the honor of serving with the fantastic vice president who you just heard from, Kamala Harris. history as the first woman, first black woman, the first woman from South Asian descent, the first daughter of an immigrant ever elected in this country. Don't tell me 
I said at the outset, I wanted to represent this campaign to represent and look like America. We've done that. Now that's what I want the administration to look like and act like. For all those of you who voted for President Trump, I understand the disappointment tonight. I've lost a couple times myself. But now, let's give each other a chance. It's time to put away the harsh rhetoric lower the temperature, see each other again, listen to each other again. And to make progress, we have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. They are not our enemies, they are Americans. They are Americans. That's right. The Bible tells us, to everything there is a season, a time to build, a time to reap, and a time to sow, and a time to heal. This is the time to heal in America. That's right. A very good message. Now this campaign is over. What is the will of the people? What is our mandate? I believe it's this. America has called upon us to marshal the forces of decency, the forces of fairness, to marshal the forces of science, and the forces of hope. In the great battles of our time, the battle of control of the virus, the battle of build prosperity, the battle to secure your family's health care, the battle to achieve racial justice and root out systemic racism in this country, and the battle to save our planet by getting climate under control, the battle to restore decency, defend democracy, and give everybody in this country a fair shot. That's all they're asking for, a fair shot. Folks, our work begins with getting COVID under control. We cannot repair the economy, restore our vitality, or relish life's most precious moments, hugging our grandchildren, our children, our birthdays, weddings, graduations. All the moments that matter most to us until we get it under control. On Monday, I will name a group of leading scientists and experts as transition advisors to help take the Biden-Harris COVID plan and convert it into an action blueprint that will start on January the 20th, 2021. That plan will be built on bedrock science will be constructed out of compassion, empathy, and concern. I will spare no effort, none, or any commitment to turn around this pandemic. Folks, I'm a proud Democrat. 
but I will govern as an American president. I'll work as hard for those who didn't vote for me as those who did. Let this grim era of demonization in America begin to end here and now. The refusal of Democrats and Republicans to cooperate with one another is not some mysterious force beyond our control. It's a decision, a choice we make. And if we can decide not to cooperate, then we can decide to cooperate. And I believe that this is part of the mandate given to us from the American people. They want us to cooperate in their interest. And that's the choice I'll make. And I'll call on Congress, Democrats, Republicans alike, to make that choice with me. The American story is about slow yet steadily widening the opportunities in America. And make no mistake, too many dreams have been deferred for too long. We must make the promise of the country real for everybody, no matter their race, their ethnicity, their faith, their identity, or their disability. Folks, America has always been shaped by inflection points, by moments in time where we've made hard decisions about who we are and what we want to be. Lincoln, in 1860, coming to save the Union, FDR in 1932, promising a beleaguered country a new deal. JFK in 1960, pledging a new frontier. And 12 years ago, when Barack Obama made history, he told us, yes, we can. Well, folks, we stand at an inflection point. We have an opportunity to defeat despair to build a nation of prosperity and purpose. We can do it, I know we can. I've long talked about the battle for the soul of America. We must restore the soul of America. Our nation is shaped by the constant battle between our better angels and our darkest impulses. And what presidents say in this battle matters. It's time for our better angels to prevail. Tonight, the whole world is watching America. And I believe at our best, America is a beacon for the globe. We will not lead, we will lead not only by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. I know, I've always believed, many of you heard me say it, I've always believed we can define America in one word, possibilities. That, in America, everyone should be given an opportunity to go as far as their dreams and God-given ability will take them. You see, I believe in the possibilities in this, in this country. We're always looking ahead. Ahead to an America that's freer and more just. Ahead to an America that creates jobs with dignity and respect. Ahead of an America that cures diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's. Ahead to an America that never leaves anyone behind. Ahead of America that never gives up, never gives in. This is a great nation. It's always been a bad bet to bet against America. We're good people. This is the United States of America. And there's never been anything, never been anything we've been able, not able to do when we've done it together. Folks, in the last days of the campaign, I began thinking about a hymn that means a lot to me and my family, particularly my deceased son, Bo. It captures the faith that sustains me, and which I believe sustains America. And I hope, and I hope it can provide some comfort and solace to the 230 million thousand Americans who've lost a loved one to this terrible virus this year. My heart goes out to each and every one of you. Hopefully this hymn gives you solace as well. It goes like this. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, and make you to shine like the sun, and hold you 
in the palm of his hand. And now together, on eagle's wing, we embark on the work that God and history have called upon us to do. With full hearts and steady hands, with faith in America and in each other, with love of country, a thirst for justice, let us be the nation that we know we can be. A nation united, a nation strengthened, a nation healed. The United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, there's never, never been anything we've tried we've not been able to do. So remember, as my grandpa, our grandpa, he said when I walked out of his home when I was a kid up in Scranton, he said, Joey, keep the faith. And our grandmother, when she was alive, she yelled, no, Joey, spread it. Spread the faith. God love you all. May God bless America. May God protect our troops. So ayun guys, thank you, thank you so much sa inyong panonood din. At kung bago po kayo dito, please don't forget to subscribe. Ayan, magbuhay po ang um, Democrat or Republican. Mabuhay po ang Amerika. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. Dahil lahat tayo ay bibigyan ng pagkakataon kung tayo mapunta ka dito sa US. So ayan, maraming maraming salamat po. God bless us all. Sana ma marami kayong natutunan sa mensahe po ni Biden, ni President Joe Biden, at saka ni Vice President Kamala Harris. Ayan. I'm very proud of them. Their tandem. Thank you, thank you so much. Ayan yung Mrs. ni President Joe Biden si Jill, isang picture ni yan. Thank you, thank you at ang kanyang family, ayan yan yung family niya family niya, anak niya, mga anak at saka mga grandchildren niya mga apo